Hi, I'm Bruce Busby, president of Roots Magic, and in this short video, we're going to spend a little time looking at one of the new features in Roots Magic 11, and that is the enhancements that we've made to the edit person screen. Now, if you're like most users, you spend a lot of time adding people to your database, editing the information about the person, basically just spending a lot of time in that edit person screen. So we went and looked at how can we make that edit person screen more intuitive, uh, less clicky, easier to enter and, and quicker to enter the information that you have for a person. So let's just go ahead and hop right into the edit screen. I'm just going to double click on Freelon here. And first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to expand out this side menu. And this is that the menu, the side menu where you can pick the different pages that are available to you. And you're going to notice there's several new uh, options here. You know, we've had the info screen all along. That's this one. And we've re, re, in previous versions, we added the media where you could kind of see all the media for a person, or you could see health conditions or DNA tests. Well, we've also added three new screens to the edit person form in version 11, and that would be notes, sources, and tasks. Now, let's take a, notes as an example. If I wanted to edit a person's notes, I end up having to select the fact that I want to edit the note for and then click on the note and bring up the note and then enter it right here and then kind of move back and forth. Well, in Roots Magic 11, when you click on the notes tab and then the notes page, you're going to see a list of every possible fact that can have a note for this person. So that's going to include the person's general note, notes for their events, birth, death, burial, that type of thing, notes for their families, notes for their marriages, notes for associations, you know, for neighbors, for example, notes attached to their names. So anything that can have a note, we display that in the list, and any of those items that do have a note, we will display an asterisk in front of it. So I can see right here, residents, if I click on that, I know there's not a note. I can click on that and I can see. But then I can come right over here and I can say, this is a residence note. Save that. And now I have added a note for the residents. I'm not having to slide in and out. I can just go right down through here and just easily click, come over here and edit it. You know, you have all your bold italics, that type of thing uh, available. Uh, and you can do that for any piece of information for that person. You also have a search field here to filter this list to any note that has a particular piece of text. So like if I typed in Bible, those are my two notes that are attached to this person that have the word Bible in it. So I can see right here there's family Bible and on the death it's, yeah, it's family Bible also. And so I can come in here and I can edit this with this filtered. I can click the X, it unfilters it, and I'm back to where I was. Okay, now I'm going to move on to sources. Now sources is going to be somewhat similar, but instead of listing every fact, we list every citation. And we do that because a fact in Roots Magic can have more than one citation. So, uh, for example, in, when I go up into the sources page here for Freelon, I can see I got one, two, three, four, five, six. I got six general citations for him. Got a couple for his residence, uh, a couple for death, a couple for burial, and one for marriage. Um, if there's families, of free law that have source citations, those will show as well. Same thing with the associations, uh, names, any names that have source citations that will have that as well. And just like with the notes, I can select any citation and I can come right over here and directly edit it. Now, if you've been using Roots Magic a while, you know what a pain that can be from here. Normally you'd have to go select a fact then you'd have to go select sources, then you'd have to so, uh, select a particular citation to slide it in, make your change, and then either save it, you know, or back out. It's a lot of, it's a lot of clicking and sliding stuff in and out. No more with the sources, you just click on the citation 
and you come over here and edit it directly. Uh, it, you can also edit the master, the master source for it if you'd like to. I usually don't do that from here, but you can if you want. Um, you can also filter your sources. So if I only wanted to see my death citations, I can come down here and pick that particular fact and there's the citations for that specific fact. Now, when this is filtered down to a particular piece of information, whether it's general, whether it's a fact, whether it's a name, whatever, when it's filtered down to a specific type of, of, of fact or, or a piece of information that the citations are attached to, clicking add will let you add a citation to that particular piece of information. So in other words, if I were to go in here, I can add a new source or select an existing source and then click next and enter the citation information. When I finish adding that citation, it will be added to whatever I'm filtered on right here. In this case, it will be added to this death fact. Now, if I happen to be on all citations where it's showing everything, if I click on add, it will let me go ahead and add a citation but that citation will be attached to the person generally. It will be attached uh, exactly the same as if I was uh, filtering it to the general citations. So if you if you're just basically add a citation when everything's showing, it's just going to add it as a general citation. And you have all other options here. You can remove you can remove a citation from a piece of information for the person. You can memorize and paste citations right here as well. And we've now added a feature that we've been getting asked for for a long, long time, and that is the ability to rearrange citations for a particular piece of information. So if I happen to be looking at the person, the general citations, and I click on rearrange, I can now rearrange these citations for this particular piece of information for the general person. And I can just click and drag and drop to whatever order I want, or I can highlight it and click move up or move down. I put it in the order I want, click OK, and those citations for that piece of information have now been sorted. And that sort, that order of sorting will be used for in reports and you know the various places that the citations for that piece of information are going to appear. Okay, now let's look at tasks. And tasks is going to work almost exactly the same way as the citations. It's going to uh, show you tasks attached to the person, to their facts, to names, to uh, uh, their associations, whatever. And like that, you can go filter, you know, you can go filter on any piece of information. And again, just like with the notes, it, whatever facts or pieces of information have a task, there'll be an asterisk out in front of the name. So you can see that none of the, this other information except for the general person have uh, any tasks associated with them. Again, you select a task and you come right over here and you just edit that task directly. You don't have to go sliding in and out and in and out like, like you do from the main screen. Now that being said, if you if you're working on this main screen and you happen to click on this, this all works exactly the same. We haven't taken this away. So this, this capability is all still there. We've just streamlined this to make it so that it is quicker and easier to add and to edit uh, and to work with your notes and your sources and your tasks. Um, one last thing I'm going to show you while I'm here on um, on this edit person screen, you'll notice that there's some little icons that are showing right here. And these are for, uh, for the proof and for pro uh, private. So for example, the little lock, if you mark a fact as private, it'll put a little lock, a picture of a lock there. So uh, it makes it stand out. You can look real quickly and see which of your facts for a particular person are private. The others are for proof. Uh, for example, um, if, if you've marked something as proof, uh, the proof is being proven right here, then it's going to do a green check mark. If you've marked it as disproven, it's going to do a circle with a slash. Now, if you, 
you're familiar with the previous versions, if so, you had something that was disproven or disputed, either one, it just put a red line through it. We had a lot of people ask, what, what is that supposed to mean? Um, you know, we try, th what we're trying to do is make, again, make a little bit more obvious, more intuitive. Uh, if you do have something that's disputed, it will do a little exclamation mark. So you can now tell the difference between something being disputed or disproven. One thing we've added new that we've had a lot of requests for is to add another proof item. And what we've done is we've added one called proposed. And so if something is proposed, you'll get a little puzzle piece. Now proposed can be thought of as um, a theory or a hypothetical. This is the, to handle the situation where you add a fact to a person and you're not really sure that this is right. You think it could be, okay, it could, it's hypothetical. I think it might be this, or I have a theory that it's this, or I propose that it's this. That's what propose. Propose kind of covers all of that. And so its little icon is going to be the little, the little puzzle piece. Now, one last thing I'm going to show you is over here on the new header, when you select a person, um, that we've we've updated this header and we talk about that in another in another video but one thing i do want to show you is that is that on this header we have a new set of icons along the bottom here and uh when you hover over it it'll show you like in this case it'll it'll show you this person has two notes this person has eight sources three media items one task no health items and no DNA items. Now, if they're if if the answer if if the amount of items they have is zero, then it's going to be gray. You can see it's a little bit lighter color for the health and the DNA because those are both zero. These others have have some count. So again, I, I you know as you move through, you can do that. Now, one thing that's kind of cool is if you'd like to be able to quickly just move through people and see who has you know, notes and sources and th things, and you'd like to see the count uh, in addition to just it turning bold or not, if you widen this this thing enough so that there's enough room, when you widen it, you'll see that it will it will add the count out to the side. And so then I can leave it like that. You know, maybe it's just temporary leaving it like that, but I can real quickly go through and spot who I have or do not have information for uh, in those various categories. And th again, these icons are not just icons, they're also buttons. You, sh uh, you probably could tell that from the fact that they kind of highlight when I do that. But this ties into what I just showed you with the new edit person pages. So for example, if I see click on a person, four notes, Okay, there's the person, there's all of it, and you can see one, two, three, four. There's four notes. He's got the four notes. If I click on sources, 13 sources, click on it, it takes me to that sources page. If I click on the media, it takes me to the media page. Again, tasks takes me to the tasks page. And likewise, the, the health and the and the DNA take me to those specific pages. So it's a very quick way to be able to see what you have for each person as you just kind of move through the through your tree. And then if you want to see more detail, you just click on a little icon and it will take you there and you can see that. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you find these new pages and this new these new capabilities on the edit screen useful. And thanks for joining us, and we'll talk to you again soon.